everyone and thank you so much for tuning in. In today's video I'm going to paint what I call a comfort painting. I'm gonna use traditional gouache, at least for the most part, and instead of relying too much on convenience colors I will primarily work with primaries, secondaries and basic colors. I have been feeling very blue lately but Despite the unfortunate circumstances, I have also been working in my sketchbooks on a very regular basis, which is awesome. And in doing that, I've made some discoveries that I want to share with you today. My hopes are that this might help you to look at your creative making differently, especially if you're like me and drift to negative self-talk when it comes to your art. Maybe you have noticed that I've been gone for a while and it was a somewhat conscious decision. I needed to take a break from social media for many reasons, but when it comes to Instagram and art YouTube, let me just name a few. I had started to compare myself to other artists, their hustle, what they do and how they present themselves way too much to a super unhealthy degree. And in my head, the conclusion was always the same. As an artist, you're way too slow, you post and share way too little, you don't have what it takes to go pro. As to your work, it is boring, it lacks meaning, and you only draw the same things. Driven by awe for other artists' great creations, I started to try all kinds of different things. Using different mediums, techniques, aesthetics, drawing animals, still lifes, painting landscapes and abstracts. And I told myself this is a journey of self-discovery to expand my skills and become the artist that I want to be. And what I wanted to be is quick and loose, efficient in my strokes and lines, more sketchy and raw, sophisticated, a master at impressive rendering and a storyteller. Or to draw playfully and super simple in this cute children's book kind of aesthetic Basically, I was trying to be everything I am not. And after a couple of weeks doing that, I was very fed up. And eventually I said, you know what, who am I fooling? This isn't working and I want painting to just be relaxing and fun. And most of this ain't it. So instead of looking at what others do right and what I do wrong, the day I started with today's painting, I browsed through my sketchbooks and artworks, always asking myself the same question. Was this fun? And then I did something that felt really awkward at first, and that was to put up my own creations at display on my wall. What you can see here are not necessarily outstanding works, but they all give me either good memories or have elements of what I actually enjoy doing. Obviously, I enjoy female portraits, usually busts, but I also enjoy exploring color themes with various art supplies, intricate details, nonsensical flowers and patterns. And a new addition to my list of enjoyable things is the use of collage. By the way, this piece here is very old and got chomped by my birds. I like this one, even though it is dated, but I can see now how it is too busy, which adds too much distraction, but I love that you can find so many details at a closer look. I also looked at works that aren't bad, but either I didn't enjoy making them as much, or I don't like certain aspects now, and I figured out why that is. There is something nice about flat sold areas of color and for a while I was very into it, but over time I learned that I prefer a subtle texture and variation in tone, shade and tint. On the other hand, what I really do not enjoy is rendering skin, hair and clothes in a three-dimensional way. And lastly, maybe it is due to my mental state at the moment, but I do not enjoy colors too vibrant and pure anymore. For bigger pieces like this one, I prefer to do the line art on my computer. I really like the expression on her face, it really resonated with me, and because I was satisfied, I printed it out and traced it onto the paper. It's just basic cans and watercolor sketchbook paper, by the way. And yeah, the tracing is a super tedious process, but it pays off because it gives me a sense of safety in case I mess up. And as you will see later in the video, it will actually help me to save the piece. Because spoilers, I messed up an important part. 
Color-wise, I'm going for something more moody and subtle, which is something I would normally do. As a child, I had an obsession with drawing historical dresses and puffy sleeves, and I wanted to revisit this idea. For the scene, I wanted to go for something melancholic but romantic. Living in a capital city, crowded, loud and busy, and in addition to that, all the noise on social media, everything just seems too fast-paced and hectic at the moment. I feel very overwhelmed and fatigued and have this longing for tranquility, being homey and nature. Hence, I'm trying to give the illusion of blurry greenery behind a window. Going into this painting, I knew that this isn't going to be finished the same day. In fact, I made the conscious decision to take all the time I need, despite knowing that it's being recorded and needs to be edited for YouTube at some point, knowing that I will have a work spree at my day job very soon. Needing and taking a lot of time with anything I do is not something I struggle with. It's actually my natural way of going about things. It's the not feeling guilt or stress over it part that is difficult. And even though I tell myself it's okay to not be quick, I know that this statement rings true, but there is this lingering feeling of resentment. Things would be easier if I was faster, right? I'd learn and study faster, I'd have things to share more often, ideally daily, a plethora of things to show for my portfolio and my shop, filled sketchbooks, a consistent schedule, right? But doing lots of quick sketching with intent on a consistent basis has demonstrated that I did not learn more efficiently. Whatever I did was not worth sharing and even though a lot of it looks actually pretty nice, it just lacks my voice. But most importantly, I felt drained, exhausted, I did not take my time to think, to step away and to take breaks. And when I actually took my time with a polished piece in my sketchbook, I was just frustrated that I couldn't execute it because the paper wasn't having it. To me, creating art is the most fun when I feel like I had solved a problem. Everything I create, I consider a lot of tiny little tasks and puzzles arising for me to be solved. And, at least for me, it feels very satisfying to not know the answer yet, but finding it somewhere along the way at the right moment. Usually after a break or when I end up in a state of flow. And the flow state is something that cannot be forced. Unless you know how to reach flow state at the touch of a button. To me, there is so much satisfaction witnessing a piece coming together over time. And when I'm at my day job, I look forward to continuing with the clothes later when I come home. It excites me. On the other hand, I have fatigue, so I feel exhausted when I sit on something for too long. Not rushing things to me means honoring my body by giving it rest as well as tapping my full potential. And by rewording my insecurity, maybe my weakness of being slow can be a good thing. Maybe I'm not too slow, but everything around us has become way too hectic. I have a demanding job with big responsibilities, and maybe it's actually quite impressive that I pursue a creative life, despite health problems, in a way that feels satisfying, exciting, and authentic. Besides, I find painting slowly very meditative. The other flaw I always struggled with is my perfectionism. I don't like to label myself a perfectionist because, in my opinion, it's not a badge of honor. Like someone would list this as their quote, bad trait in a job interview. If anything, I've always felt shameful about it because it causes many problems every time you don't get things 100% right. However, telling a perfectionist to let go of high standards is like telling a depressed person to not be so sad anymore. But perfection is an illusion, and striving for it while not tolerating any mistakes can be very harmful. My perfectionism oftentimes leads to a all-or-nothing kind of attitude. If I feel overwhelmed and likely to fail, I sometimes don't even attempt or initiate. And that makes me feel shameful. And then sometimes when I do tackle a project, I can be very persistent and determined and I try to do my very best. As always, the key ingredients is balance. And balance for me, once again, is taking my time, taking breaks, stepping away, doing my very best with my current skills and schedule, trying to learn something new, but not too much at a time. 
and accepting flaws. The funny thing is, the more perfect you are trying to be, the more basic and boring you become. And ironically, if you strive for perfection too hard, you end up messing up. Just like me with her mouth. I stick to the line art first and it looked good, but somehow I thought something is slightly off and I can do even better. And I ended up distorting, fixing and making things worse than they were before. My perfectionism teaches me lessons all the time. When I push it too far, I either end up doing nothing or I overdo it and gotta fix things later. It teaches me to do my best and see results I wasn't even aware I'm capable of. But it also brings me down to earth, for I'm only human. And when I feel like I suck because I didn't get that stroke right, because my hand was shaking again, or that brush seems to be doing its own stubborn thing, there is a human touch I admire so much in the traditional art pieces of others. Why may I not do the same? There are so many other things I perceive as flaws. Sticking to the same subject matter, for instance. Some people build their career on that, and yet somehow I feel like I should not do it. I think it stems from hearing art mentors saying to go out of your comfort zone, to draw various things from life, or perhaps terms like same face syndrome being thrown around like it's a bad thing. But the more I think about it, the more I am aware of how foolish this notion is and how you should not take every advice you hear and apply it to yourself. We create what we are drawn to and it is pointless to fight it. You may explore various things, but if you stick to just landscapes or birds or whatever you fancy, at least you'll get very good at it. Anyway, other insecurities I have is that I don't have representable sketchbooks that look like art pieces in itself. Something that is being presented to me all the time. That it must mean I'm a fraud if I can't come up with a fancy thing out of the blue. The good thing is, I don't need to pretend that I'm good at just sketching and I can let go of the pressure by just using it as a training ground where everything is allowed. I love journaling my deepest thoughts, but don't like to use a conventional diary, so I can do it in my sketchbook accompanied by drawings and scribbles. And it's because I write down my private thoughts, I don't ever have to present a sketchbook tour, so I am free of pressure to make it pretty. And lastly, I can't render something in a cell shading or a three-dimensional kind of style, at least not in a way that I find aesthetically pleasing. I always made myself believe that this is just because I don't have the rendering skills and that I'm looking for excuses to be lazy and not putting in enough effort. The lack of this skill makes me feel like a fraud and imposter syndrome kicks in because I'm impressed by what others do and how that is even humanly possible. However, even though this kind of art is something I find impressive in terms of skill, it is not something that I'm drawn to the most. And the more I think about it, the more I realize how many artists I admire don't render in a three-dimensional way either. Isn't it funny how we can make up rules for ourselves that don't apply to others? There is a market for everything and there are enough artists who do wall art, pattern design, editorial or commissioned work with simpler shapes with no render whatsoever. And besides, the phrase the simpler the better exists for a reason and it's such a challenge in itself to make something simple look really good. If you are a creative, is there anything you constantly wish you could or should do differently, but you can't seem to change it? Maybe you cannot afford any art supplies and just draw with a ballpoint pen and that makes you feel inferior. Or perhaps you feel like you rely on reference images too much. Whatever it is, maybe someone out there admires you because of it. All right, I am peeling off the tape here, but I knew something was very off, especially about her lips and her left eyebrow. So I scanned the art because I wanted to examine what it was. And also I wanted to check on how terrible the fixative fail looks. And to my surprise, it looks actually pretty cool. I would add textures and effects like that to my digital art to make it look more traditional and organic, so I am very satisfied with that. It goes to show that once again I freaked out for nothing. And when it comes to the lips, yup, I strayed a lot from the initial placement. As I am looking at it, my inner critic says, 
It's not valid to fix traditional art digitally. That's not what a real traditional artist does. You should have gotten it right on paper, you phony. But it's my art, my rules, I may do what I want. And what I want is making minor tweaks to the eyes and the left eyebrow so they look more true to the original line art. That way I have two versions of her. In this one she's thoughtful and ruminating. And in this one she's doing the pouty lips and judging you. The more I look at it, the less terrible and more amusing I find it. So if you found something you always hated about your art, how is it maybe a good thing? Even if you don't know, please share anyway because others might help you see the good in it. Let's encourage each other in the comments. By the way, thanks so much for 5000 subs. If you want to support me the best and also the only way at the moment is to like this video and leave me a comment, subscribe if you haven't and want to see more and there is also my Instagram. Thank you so much for watching.